12 noon, what do you say? Good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> yes, 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 hello. <laughs> That's right, and welcome. You know, we were at uh, out for dinner last night, and I was speaking with Yole, and as she was saying, you know, what about regular living, and um, how, you know, there's an essence that happens in satsang, uh, a peacefulness that uh, the experiencing that's happening is actually magnified because awareness is, is fully here um, and then awareness falls in with each of us. Um, it vibrates and welcomes itself uh, and the, the container of satsang is meant for that specifically and it's been that over time. Uh, so consciousness knows that that's that's what this container is for, so it falls in with itself, and yet it's magnified. Um, and so sometimes what happens is people uh, imagine that the felt sense of being uh, aware is, is, is similar to what you might feel in, in satsang, and, and it is in a lot of ways, and it also isn't in a lot of ways, because we're accustomed to our own field, we're accustomed to, we're already actually, awareness is totally aware of what's going on, it's whether or not we realize that is the only difference. Um, so it's much more familiar, everybody has moments of being totally aware, uh, and, and mostly it's so ordinary that people don't notice it. Um, and so that's where the, the book that uh, I put together, that's where it came from, was that my felt invitation was is that people didn't have to come to satsang, that they could uh, invite this awareness within their daily happenings, wherever they are, um, and to adjust to that on their own. You're not really on your own <laughs> ever, so it's like as soon as I speak about something, of course, it, it keeps changing, including uh, the truth. Um, and it, it can be very deep, very alive in the moment uh, at home as well. It's just here that that's that's what here you you sort of rest in it a little bit more deeply. So you you really consciously know that this is this is it. Um, but it's to also point to that it is magnified. You know, um, it's part of the energetics of uh, what attracts a person to this to come uh, and then that supports it to become more stable and, and tasted and the more you're consciously aware of that the more it knows itself the more conscious it is and, and so forth uh, so it strengthens that it's just to recognize that it is more magnified here um, and it may not you know it may be mistaken when you're at home uh, because it's so ordinary, it's so simple, um, that it can be missed. And so that's part of what the pointing is here, is that it's available in any moment, uh, all of the moments, but only in the moment. <laughs> it doesn't stretch out past that, you know, it's just a play of moments. Uh, the whole happening. So did that, yeah? Because I just uh, wanted to include that today when we talked about it at dinner last night. You were saying also how to bring the, you know, with us the feeling of satsang without kind of having a division, you know, so a satsang I was in one way, now I'm in another way and that was better and this is not. Or in the comparing. Exactly, when you know, keep comparison. So I think it's also kind of very good to know how to kind of bring it with us, you know, what to do. Mm -hmm. Well, the main part of that is to not compare. <laughs> <laughs> to perhaps notice that comparing is happening right. <laughs> in the moment. 
And then that would be the truth, comparing, comparing happening. Um, because each moment is, it cannot repeat itself. Everything's changing. I mean, the, 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 everything's in movement, what appears to be in, in this reality of, that we call life as a human being, uh, that it can't be the same. So it's not to, you know, it's to let go of looking for a repeated experience and to settle in with exactly how it is, you know, exactly just this. And even saying that to yourself, just like this, like what? Like it is right here, right now, the simplicity of that. Uh, and whatever that includes, it can be, you know, eating the cereal, um, the felt sense of the crunchiness of the nuts and the granola, hearing the sound, tasting, feeling the crunching. You know, there's so much going on in each moment that uh, is there to be with. Um, and it's just a, a sort of a tilt of the attention to be with that, the direct experiencing happening, um, rather than an attempt to uh, bring something from the past into the present or looking for the future or where this is going to happen next and how can I bring this, you know, experience on? <laughs> how can I, you know, setting yourself up is, is good, can be for experiencing. But at the same time, I think it's also, um, okay, not to do comparison, all right, but uh, uh, um, as you say at the beginning, you know, satsang can point you in some way, uh, uh, and of course in satsang it's, you know, that point, you know, the awareness, it, it is magnified, but um, in your, let's say, ordinary life, if you, you kind of, you go back to the feeling that you have in, in the satsang, I mean, the satsang can be a, a point of reference, mm -hmm. right? So. The comparison in, in that, in some sense, can be positive because kind of, you know, brings you back to to a place uh, of mm -hmm. awareness where, you know, mm -hmm. you want to be. Mm -hmm. So maybe it will not hold the comparison because in satsang it is magnified mm -hmm. with your present, with and, the present of other people yeah. and, you know, with the whatever. Um, I lost my thing, my thought. Yeah, Anyhow, like, that's yes. what, that's the, <laughs> the taste, the taste of yourself as awareness. Certainly, uh, there's something that uh, seats in that, and that's what the satsang space. Yes, yeah, certainly uh, supports it, strengthens that, so that it can be recognized um, too. And that's a little bit. It's just that the details won't be. The felt sense of awareness is the same. Um, so yes, it's good to taste this, um, but the details themselves, it's not to attach to how it's supposed to look or feel, yeah. right, um, in the expression of the energy, or uh, whether there's mindlessness, you know, because presence is, you know, being aware of the felt sense, it's just so simple that it gets missed. Uh, but it's, it's a curiosity is always helpful to be curious about, okay, what is this moment speaking and experiencing that just as it is, exactly as it is. It's not supposed to be anything more or less than what actually is occurring. So, yeah, it's helpful for sure to experience uh, yourself in no separation as satsang invites quite strongly. So, so then these sounds today to uh, if you have a yes for it, uh, both for you folks here and the people who are online, 
uh, to allow these sounds to be in support of you uh, allowing awareness um, of what is in all your moments, regardless of where you are or what's happening. Would that, does anybody feel a yes for that? Yeah? So we don't know what the sounds will do. We can just sort of hint towards it to support us in that. Uh, and so to just let, let go of that now, once you've said your yes, and just feel how are the sounds with you right here, right now. And right here, right now, and right here, right now. <laughs> Even with the voice or any time. But the toning sounds don't have a, a form or a shape to them that the mind can grab a hold of and uh, make into something so they're kind of handy. And once again, following the four or five sounds, we'll follow that with some sitting in silence, just allowing yourself to uh, experience what actually is occurring, letting sounds come in, um, experiencing yourself just here as you are, simply breath happening, whatever energy may or may not be moving, just this.
Okay. Connecting. Yeah. I want to keynote this thing for some reason. Just take a minute. Something's right here right now. So that's the simplest thing has to be the simplest thing, but yet it's so obscure that we have this whole satsang industry built <laughs> around it <laughs> to somehow get us through it. To support us. Yeah. So then that is kind of really puzzling. Why? And then we, we don't, we somehow never look. What this mechanism is and for me I mean I want our sharing everything I ever get involved with I want it to be simpler and simpler and simpler and more relevant to life and so then if the simplest thing seems to be the most difficult thing then the thing what to look at is what is the nature of the bail Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot about how our society is so speedy and there's such a numbness going on and that numbing is like something we we all do. We can point to the ones that are the most obvious, the alcoholics, the drug addicts. Hmm. And well, we're trained. We're trained to be have the attention outside of ourselves. Sex sex offenders and mm -hmm. and everything else from binging or the obesity. Bankers. Okay, bankers. I don't know. And this numbing, we're numb to all these things that are really horrendous, really. And uh, I just want to propose something, you know. I want to, I want to make a proposal because I don't know. And, uh, 
we live in this complex society and and we can point fingers at and make up words like greed and stuff like that and uh, I think it's really really much simpler mm -hmm. maybe they're just need a few statistics oh bummer <laughs> <laughs> It is a bummer. It is a bummer because this hits right dead center. Okay. <laughs> Honesty. It's <laughs> a total this bummer. Has never been my <laughs> love of mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit! Somebody told me stole my bookmark. Oh. <laughs> That's is not it a that bummer. Yellow one? That yellow one. Yeah. Where is it? Okay. I don't know, historian Will Durant calculated that there have only been 29 years in all of human history during which there was no war underway somewhere. So then we talk about the human nature, the warring kind. Look at our last two decades. Two million dead in the war in Afghanistan. One and a half million dead in the fighting of Sudan. 800,000 butchered in 90 days of the Tutsis in Rwanda. Half a million dead in Angola. Quarter million dead in Bosnia. 200,000 dead in Guatemala. 150,000 dead in Liberia. Quarter million dead in Brunda. 75,000 dead in Algeria. Estimated 600,000 dead in Iraq. Untold tens of thousands lost in the border conflict between Ethiopia, Eritrea, fighting in Colombia, the Israel-Palestine conflict, Chechnya, Sri Lanka, southern, southeastern Turkey, Sierra Leone, Northern Ireland, Kosovo, Kosovo, civil war, brutality, ideology, intolerance, conspiracy, murder, or oppression, and the daily fair are the daily fair for all but the privileged few in the industrialized world. This numbness, we need this numbness so badly, and this is just our corporate our military industrial complex mm -hmm. and that's that's why you know but now people are there are more people that are waking up but that would be why people aren't waking up because that would be why people yes. aren't waking up that would be why there's a satsang industry because nobody walks up and looks at this and why don't we do it because we don't know what to do with that energy we absolutely don't know what to do with it what energy what's evoked when you just see what we're really doing to each other you know, and we're doing it because when we say the bankers, mm -hmm. and this is what just came so clear to me. Well, it's tricky we, when you when you, when you generalize and say the bankers, right? Because that that cannot be. We cannot know that all the bankers are this, right? right exactly, exactly. What I'm saying is that we define action as commission, and those guys committed a crime. And I just saw that action is not commission. Action is commission and omission dancing together. Omission is the space for commission. And every one of us that didn't go and vote, every one of us that doesn't read the news, and the news is not the source for anything, every one of us that's complacent, complacency, and every one of us that doesn't go out on the square and not say, bring our soldiers home, bring our nuclear submarines home, put our, well, our aircraft carriers in mothballs, See, it's just tricky because there's so many shoulds in that, right? That it should show up like this because this is really important. Doesn't people say this? And they should be this and they should be that. And that's the tricky the part. Alternative the, no, alternative the alternative is numbness. No, the alternative might be completely something. If, if more people are more aware they do not kill each other, you know, maybe in the throes of actually being on the battlefield, uh, there's a, a presence and awareness and there's such a survival happening like rock mountain climbers you know they're they're actually on the edge of of letting go of mortality so there can be an awareness there but to actually move into the place of being on the field prior to that it it, it with awareness it cannot go against itself once it recognizes itself and it can only move what feels true like i could have all these feelings about ethiopia uh but until somehow something happens that I can support people there to the best of my ability with how I know how, if that's my calling. So still supporting people to become aware of, of what's important and what matters for them 
Yes, it's all illusion, and does it matter? And what matters for you is different than what matters for me or how it shows up. Even though it could look atrocious, it may not touch some people because it's not where awareness wants a play to happen. So it comes, keep coming back to right here, right now, the individual person and what what is aware here with each person. That that is the only it's not way. too hard to be aware of these things. But taken as a big thing, you see, a thing. We cannot know what's actually occurring in the in the heart of somebody uh, who's at the bank. You and can. They, it's happening in my heart too. I can reflect everybody. You can be I can aware reflect of everyone what's in this room, in and I know heart. exactly what's happening to them. And I don't know by by name and form, no but need. I know what's happening to there them. There would be no energy. need for them to be alive if you knew what was happening for them, because each person is an expression of awareness, and it's completely unique. If I could know what was happening for these, I can feel energies, but I can never know what's happening. I need to ask because they have their whole flavor of being that they're looking through what what's happening, you know, whether they're a man or whether they're a woman. And we can't erase all of that and make everyone the same. So what we have is is people that we can be with and we can meet and, and be true to ourselves. And the more people who are living that way, the better the vibration, the higher the vibration gets. I don't know about better. Um, because that still forms a, a judgment. Right here, right now, is all we have, and that's just the truth. What's here, and what motivates us to move this way or that way? And being connected with that is is just in the flow, then. It sounds like, you know, to me it sounds like you're saying that individuals can awaken and see and investigate their heart and find out and the guy finds himself on a battlefield about a battlefield he'll hold his gun up and he'll say oh i'm going to shoot high because i how could i shoot that guy and i'll bet you there's been many 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 people who have done that that's totally not enough that's just not it there's Why? The, there's a nuclear submarine out there that says hey today we're going to shoot off a couple of cruise missiles mm -hmm. and a couple of hundred uh, innocent people are going to get hit by mistake and then that's just shrug your shoulders that never happened it's blanked out you don't have it until you call your cruise missile, your cruise missile. Uh, you're not even American, but you're in North America, and you're saying that, uh, the, you know, we can build this big, ar vast array of arms, and, and uh, so let's use them. We have the right to use them. And uh, we'll make up some kind of hocus-pocus that uh, Saddam Hussein has a, uh, a super bingo game somewhere hidden, and then we'll shoot off about a thousand of them. So as far as I, in my own direct experience, all of that stuff, what that does it supports me to be even more minute, more close to my heart, more of, of whatever it is I can offer in support of people. So that closes in. you off? No, it doesn't close me off at all. I actually I do feel it, you know, and I, I follow what's true for what I expose to this system because it is very sensitive and it can get crushed and maybe sometimes it needs to be crushed and that's okay. It's, it's that when you fall in completely with yourself, that gives a space, that gives more space, that expands the space so that more people, wherever they are, simultaneously in the moment, can fall in to something more true for them. So we are changing the vibration by being with what is. We're changing the vibration of the whole world. My experience is that I've learned more from two months of Occupy than I've learned from four years of Satsang. Mm -hmm. Not because they know anything or there's any they to know anything or nobody told me anything, but I went there and I saw what's happening and I, and I started to look, I opened my eyes. And uh, for me, Satsang industry is the captains of complacency. And uh, that's a great phrase back from the 50s, navel gazers. I don't experience it like that. But I, you have no idea about those numbers I just rattled off. 
You have no idea about it. You're you're insulated, isolated, sweet little prim Vancouver lady <laughs> sitting in her, her the nice appearance little of that. north. You don't, but you don't know. Yeah, you know, we don't know what what I feel or what I connect. Confess. With. Well, so I, I will know. What What do you want to know? I'm not going to say that the I I continually look and watch the news and let that bring this a vibration into that energy. Right? There's there's also attending to this. If I am not tending to this, I cannot tend to anything. So in my love of this, I follow what's appropriate for her first. I follow that. Because what that's all I've got is what my heart says. And in that then sometimes say, yes, I have gone into correctional centers and support people in, in meditation, whatever I can do. I'm just this Prim and what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I am only this that appears here as it is, right? So this, perhaps these, that there's cameras here, can the taste of this energy, this commitment to love, you know, it can perhaps, I don't know about the, I see it as energy. I don't know either. I don't so, know. I'm just making a proposal that something is way simpler than it seems. And, and we, we are working at a level like here and saying, oh, everything is simple because it's all here now. What else right here, right now? Could I mean, but there's a veil and I can't. But underneath here, there's mm -hmm. this uh, horrendous way we live and, and, and support. And we support it by turning, it, turning our eye away, or by averting our eyes. We support you? it. Absolutely, absolutely. For sixty years, I've I've never and wanted now? to look at it. And well, now, I mean, now I'm you're just asking you. you a question. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just, just asking just myself asking a, a question. question. I'm just saying, it's well, just I don't know what to it. do. You know, and it's not like I'm I'm uh, thinking that anxiety is any kind of a cure, but I sure do think that looking at it as as a cure and it's just as important as working on some side effect of what this main numbness is. The main numbness, and we're going to work on some side effect on some other level. Okay, is there numbness with you right now? We can only work with the moment. When you group it out and you make it into a big happening and you say, this is how Americans are, or this is how North Americans are, you know, that, that's a tricky thing. It's true. And we can respond so to that. I mean, it's true. Well, it's true too, right? Because we can look hindsight and we can too. see. And the only thing we have to be with is the moment. So how does that affect you? And how do you move from there? What's right for you? Right, because to to blank it out and say people should be this or that, um, because you feel that this is touching. I, I you. don't even say that because, like, why would I even say it? And if I did, it would make no effect whatsoever. So all I do is I put up a picture or a story, and people could say, "Oh, I attach to that," or "No, I I'd rather stay without. I don't need that." And then I would say, if you're saying I don't need it, uh, you think then I can't handle it. It's too heavy duty for me. Or let someone else do it, or I didn't do it because I'm I have omitted, I have not committed, and so then some kind of false sense of innocence, or so what I'm not saying, it's I'm just, not saying anything. I'm just painting a well, picture, putting something on the table, and saying, <laughs> yes. pick it up if you want it, and leave it there if you don't. Well, you're saying quite a bit. You're saying that that's saying this or that. You're saying that this. Yeah, is it's weird. irrelevant. Well, is and it or isn't it? It depends. It's irrelevant. You say that this the way is, that it's anything uh, is irrelevant. Then you're saying. You know, all the Zen monks and all these Tibetan men, make, to me, I know, I can feel they're making a difference. And maybe they're there and they're not out on the street. But I can feel that. I can feel the love of that. I can feel the love of Ramana. And he's still here. Connecting with, with love and allowing myself to feel that. That's vulnerable. That's why people don't do it up until now. Because even though it may not look like those Tibetan monks are, that are in the cave or in their monastery, it, maybe it doesn't look like they're caring about Occupy. But, you know, we don't really know, but the, that is changing the vibration. It is. It's... Uh, Occupy is not a thing to care about. It's only a little mountain peak peeking out of the, the morass. It's it, only, it seems it's like only a care. little evidence to this trite little Western world that we live in. Even a year ago, I was starting to um, uh, study stand sustainability. 
at Dominican University, and they were and they had this thing called BOP. It's called bottom of the pyramid. Well, it's only like two thirds of, of humanity, which live on less than five dollars a day. And so then we start to say, "Whoa, you mean there's a BOP out there?" <laughs> mm-hmm. God, I don't know. You call that numbness, or no, or what? I I don't generalize in it. That I I don't know. I've been to lots of countries. I see people who, you know, in our way of perceiving how life should be. I go to a village in Indonesia and I see that they're living a heck of a lot happier than we are in all of our stuff that we have. And they don't have any shoes and they live in a bamboo hut and there's people, they carry their babies on their back. Well, they still go to work, but they're together in a different way. Um, And for me to say, oh, that's not okay because they don't have any shoes or they don't have a a car, um, (laughs) you know, I connect with the person. Um, not the outside traffic. I'm not so talking much. about the consumption. Their whole society mm-hmm. is enslaved to to our Western monetary system and blah 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 blah. And as long as they don't make any waves, you know, we don't send an aircraft carrier. It's all going to collapse in my lifetime, and I'm old. You know, <laughs> even now, uh, China and Russia and Japan and India. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say collapsing? Isn't this a happen? It's are making a new monetary system that's going to supplant the dollar. And when the dollar crushes and collapses, there'd be no money to support those aircraft carriers. And our lifestyle will go right down the toilet. And it'll be, you know, it could be in weeks, actually, is what happened in 2008 when when the stock market froze up. Mm-hmm. It could be in years, weeks, certainly not tw- you know, 2050. Some of, that, some of that happening is the wake-up call. It is where people are becoming less numb and God, more alive. if you need a, a sledgehammer on your head like that. Well, it, look at that. It looks like it, it looks like it. it Somebody it, has to stand up and scream. And people are. Because they, they're starting to, right? The whole Occupy thing is about people standing up and not carrying on and not carrying on with the numbness. To me, it, it it's looking like it is happening. It's a happening. Things are changing. People are looking at the whole shmeel differently because of this. I've asked you several times, you know, and you know way you come up with it, but I don't. I think it, there's a lot more to go. It's about the technology. I call it the technology of tra- energy transformation, because when you take a, a sharp look at the way the world treats the world and the way we condone it by our, mm-hmm. well, I, I believe that's what the Tibetan are, are doing a lot. They're letting this energy pass through their. They're systems. letting that energy in. Yeah. Somehow they let that energy in. And the fellow, the Hapono Ono fellow, I mean, that's what he yeah. was doing, is letting the uh, energies of people who were murderers and stuff, yeah. and whatever it is that was, I, I know, yeah. for him to, to do that. So but it has to be transformation and not sidestepping, because like when Gloria shared, you know, about how she saw how she was saying, I choose peace instead of this. That's not it. And she recognized It has to be that. creativity. Mm-hmm. Something that has to be created out of that energy. And real. Creative, real, and everything else will follow Mm -hmm. the moment that numbness goes off. And that doesn't mean the whole world changes. The moment I face that and I'm okay with it and I let that energy go through my body, I don't need any satsang. I am in the moment. It's just available. My numbness is gone. Right? Whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. And it can be handy to just point out, like like Gloria, you know, that, that it's affirming to be able to speak it outside and have it received. Sometimes that's just a good thing to happen for a person. It helps them to register what's going on. Or a technology to recognize this is supports numbness. This supports clarity. This supports that's numbness. Right. This supports Making clarity. Any 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 group of details into a thing supports numbness. Capturalizing anything into something 
makes it un you, you can't touch it. A happening is something different. It's in the moment. What's happening? This is something we can be with and we can work with and we can make a difference. But capsulize it into something and it, it's it can't be touched. It's become something. Rabble rouser. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> it seems to me that so much good is happening. You know, and I don't know, is that rose-colored glasses? I don't know. Because both are, are there. And this creates a movement of energy, the darkness and the light. And in that movement, life life happens as well. So there is, to call one side wrong, right? Doesn't the darkness make us look toward the light? We need both. And that's maybe shocking to say, did we need this? Do we need 9-11? Do we need that? And it, apparently we, did, we, we do, because it happened. And then how can we move from here? Right here, what calls each person? You are alive, this expression. And, and you can follow that. And if it's in accordance with the universe, it will happen. It will carry you along. To satsang, even if it is worthless. <laughs> I don't know. It's just happening. All it is here is me being myself and responding. A lot has been going. Is it, is it right? Yeah, it's kind of sliding. You might want to just tilt the mic towards yourself. Yeah. It's all that energy from Richard. Loosened everything out. <laughs> <laughs> A lot has been going on. <laughs> 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 the energy is doing something. Okay. Will you stay there now? Okay. How about there? Okay. Is that is that good enough? That is good enough. Okay. okay. Um, what I've noticed, because I've been trying to be diligent about opening to awareness, um, listening to satsangs, following teachers, reading, doing whatever I've really been led to do. And it's occurred to me that it's been happening on an intellectual basis. Uh, it's, it's going on in the mind. And what's different about this satsang is, and it's probably because you work with energy, however it is you do that, I'm sensing it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I can see a change has taken place the first time I can really sense it. Now, it's not the first time I've worked with energy. Mm -hmm. I was It was presented to me years ago before I really understood what was happening by a teacher named Brew Joy, who was a medical doctor who started working with it. And I was introduced to chakras and energies um, and not really understanding that and knowing how they they can change. But from where I am now, I can sense and feel it. And when we had that discussion about frustration and uh, stress, something changed on an energy level. And that was totally different than um, the intellectual thinking changes that mm -hmm. thinking, right? Mm -hmm. The thinking level. Uh, it's it's very hard to make the the distinction until and 
And maybe that's where one of these veils is that Richard was talking about. The sensing energy seems to be a kind of a subtle thing. And you know better than I, maybe it can change in someone. And even if they're not aware of it, it can make a deeper change. Mm -hmm. With me, I was aware of it and I'm very grateful. Mm -hmm. And and I can see um, and feeling and sen sensing it into that, what, what that is like. So... Um, that that is a subtle type of a, a change. It can be subtle, or it can be it be, can become very obvious, right? Okay. When as soon as I ask people, okay, well, where is that frustration? Every single one can find it in their body. So, at some okay. level, they do know. It's just that we're not used to looking in that direction. All right. You're helping identify these energies, maybe that yeah. are always present. You're saying, but we're not aware of them. if if they're present, right? It, I'm just noticing that it seems like. Oh, Most okay. people are fairly sensitive uh, and aware. And, and it's just they're not they're not used to looking that way. Okay. Right? No, we're not. And this is what satsang does. We're not used to any of these things. Mm -hmm. I mean, going out into the world, I'm used to every day whatever is going on out there. I'm mm -hmm. not used to taking the time and really looking into energies, really looking into. All of the things you're talking about, including, and it was wonderful what Richard brought up. Mm -hmm. And as as he brought that up, I could feel this this compassion. It's it's interesting. The same same thing that he mentioned about all this stuff that was happening to mankind is is that feeling of compassion that I was feeling about my son in my own individual way about my son's suffering. Mm -hmm. But when it's extended, it's extended to mankind's suffering. And mm -hmm. that's that's what I, I picked up on. That's right. And that's what the difference is in being willing to simply experience all of it. But it's not easy. It's not easy. Because until, it, 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 yeah. it, it hurts. Mm -hmm. and, and we... And that's where that veil, we want to keep ourselves from not feeling that, not, mm -hmm. not hurting. Yeah, up until now. Yeah. And Richard made it very, very clear how much he is open to that. Mm -hmm. um, but do you see how you're allowing yourself to feel that frustration and how you changed that bit is a, a support to the bigger picture of what's going on. Yes, you've made me realize that. that you, well, I supported you to realize that. You, you, you supported me to. Yeah. Yes. And that's where it's been so helpful, things that were coming up. And I believe you mentioned Ho'oponopono, which I have done. Mm -hmm. I was there, and I had a workshop, and I did hear several testimonies of people where they had worked simply by opening up their energy, uh, by just being open, they there were specific incidences where people were changed, things were touched, mm -hmm. and one of them wa was involving troops on a battlefield. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree with this because meditation has been my my backup all, all these years that when when I'm just sitting in meditation, I don't know what's happening, and I don't need to know, but, but just to know that something is going out there, and maybe on a vibrational level, what you were saying, well, I it's, totally it's like believe when we, that. When we invited, uh, if people appeared in our hearts, that we could include them in this energy. You know, what you know, there's oh, been feedback oh. over time that when we've done yes. that, that things have yes. changed for people, even though they weren't personally in satsang, because they were uh, included in heart, that's what occurred to somebody's heart, mm -hmm. that stuff does happen for them in their details of whatever's happening. There has been uh, So maybe changes. this is the piece that we're not seeing is how important what seems to be insignificant, what we're not even sure is, is going on. You we... are the universe. You are, um, right? Everything that's going on in you is a representation of what's happening in the world. Wow. So being with it, your willingness to be okay. with that is the support to the world. And if there's action on the outside that comes your way, both 
you know, if that's true and right to your heart. And, and even if it is just a mistake and find out that, you know what, my trying to control this, my attempt to stop people from dying is not appropriate. And, and that's the sense I get that. And that's for the helplessness, which is another very difficult yeah. feeling. Yeah. Very difficult. Yeah. Knowing that my son is suffering, knowing that mankind is suffering, and yes. being helpless. Absolutely. Yeah. Except to control. Except to feel that to, helplessness. Because from that helplessness, most people avoid feeling that, and then they take the action to get away from it. Which, which is just to engage in something, anything, so they don't have to feel that. Or to say, I, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. Uh, or go to war. Or go to war. Because then I'm doing something and I don't, doing don't have to feel this helplessness. Wow. So one of the motivations for war would be just doing something avoiding to alleviate. What, yeah. Most often avoiding love. When and it comes down to it, right, it, it filters down. The layers come down and it will be, you know, because it's crushing to really so allow it. being able, to, as individuals, we need to open to this vulnerability that's been so difficult for us to do. It's the opposite of numbness. And it's, it's an invitation. Right. Mm -hmm. As soon as we say we need to or it should be, then it just becomes another task and yeah, right. it gets made into a thing and then we're in trouble again uh, or it can invite trouble. So it's stopping right here, right now. What's here right now? Am I feeling something because there's so much that's going on? Because I just watched the news and the reality of what's happening in our world, you know, um, there'll always be things happening in our world. And it's in feeling how that is for us, being willing to feel the depths of that. Uh, right. The other piece of that that you've opened up, though, is regardless of what's happening, spirit is God, the universe in control, no matter how it looks. As I mentioned, the wrappings, the wrappings might be horrendous. Mm-hmm on this gift that each one is. It might be helpful. Does anybody have the book here just to read that? Because you've mentioned it a couple of times, but is there a, one of the books right here right now? Is there one handy or no? I have a book. Is it just there in your bag? Would you get the black? Just because you referred to it a couple of times. Well, and that's that's another extension I've gotten. It's like I wanted to take on, on a lighter note. Uh, thank you for giving me a lot of Christmas gifts. This this Christmas, I'm not Yay. doing my traditional <laughs> Christmas. I, I'm avoiding it by going on a cruise for the first You're time in my it. life. A loving avoiding. Doing the traditional <laughs> tree. I'm not doing any of that. But it's interesting. It's like Canela presented me with all these gifts because every person is a gift with wrapping. Okay, I'll, I'll read this. Perfect opening for this. So this is from the book. It's just the beginning, something I wrote uh, a while ago. Uh, and, and you added something beautiful to it. You are the present, the gift of each moment. You are the only one to receive this gift, this present. Allow an unwrapping of that. Will you relax enough to witness this unwrapping? Thoughts, sensations, emotions, all that is revealed is simply the wrapping paper of the gift of who you are. The invitation is to not get caught up in the wrapping paper, to simply let it unfold, to reveal that which resides always, the truth of who you are. And she's added, and everyone else. And she also added, Gloria's writing, open to the love that you are right now. That changed. Yesterday it was return to the love that you are. And something said, uh, you don't have to return your, it's there. So it's open to what's already there. And th this is the other um, aspect of, of satsang. It's causing things to happen 
motion is taking place. Um, openings, there's, I don't know how to express it. Openings. But, it's yeah, openings. Very expressive. Yes, yes, <laughs> openings. And words are coming out and... More of you. No, not more of me, more of... It's it's like getting rid of the me, more of... What is that? Whatever. Then? It is more of you as awareness. It's just not touch. Oh, right? as awareness. Right, when it's just happening, because that's you. What's talking now is not glory, <laughs> the tradition. Right. How it used to be, yeah. No, yeah. Not, yeah. Speaking, not it anyway. Speaking is happening in this flavor. <laughs> See, it comes in the sound and the flavor of your voice. This, so what remains is beautiful. But again, this, it took satsang for this to happen. And and personal, uh, you know, listening to many different satsangs with different teachers was one thing. But uh, and then I'm sure different people resonate with different teachers. There's been a resonation of energies, mm -hmm. yes, here at that. Mm -hmm. Very very heart centered, whereas a lot of it I'm realizing has been uh, more head centered. Mm -hmm. And the heart center is is coming. It's a different place. So. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. Can you stay there and be in the conversation? Or can I bring the camera in? Uh, okay. Oh, well, yes. Yep. Oh. In the conversation yes, I will. Yes. Kim, do you hear us? I do. Where are you calling from? Uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Well, thanks for uh, your patience and thanks for coming on. Oh, great. Well, thank you. This has been wonderful. Um, I, I have a, <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of work, um, and I'm trying to stop this whole fix it thing and, and, uh, just be, and I'm doing a pretty good job of it, but I have this chronic pain in my leg. It's muscle tightness, uh, several muscles, and it's been going on for about two years now. And I can't do the, the standard be with the feeling, allow the sensations thing with the leg. I just, I'm, I get upset for that it's even there, and then I numb out, and I feel like there's anger there, and I, it's hard for me to touch anger. I mm -hmm. was a rageaholic many years ago, and I kind of shut that off. And so I was wondering if it would be possible for... Um, I mean, I feel like when there's space, mm -hmm. uh, I can do this. And I would wondering if it would be at all appropriate now to ask you to kind of walk me through. Yes. I Thank love you. how you say walk you through, especially when it's with your leg. <laughs> 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 walk you with your leg. <laughs> but that is, that is part of the offering here. In, in no separation, I can be with you in, um, and that can sometimes feel quite supportive. Um, so uh, is this, uh, are there sensations in the leg here right now? There's really very little. The, the pro and that's probably part of the problem is okay, well, when let's I'm go. Let's go with the little. Let's go with the little. Is that all right? It is. Or I could stand up, I guess, and then there would be a lot more. Is, is more sensation better? Um, no, as long as there's some, because it, it's, it's the location that's more that the energy's caught in, in a location, right? Okay. So what we're, we're doing is just giving it some space, okay. uh, so it can move and express itself, uh, instead of remaining held there, because when we feel pain, or even when it cognitively comes in as pain, the automatic response is to attempt to stop it. Yes. Right. And so we're, we're going to take that lid off of pain, right? That word, we're going to take it off of this and just feel it as energy. And breathe. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Just opening your eyes as well, so you can see that I'm here with you here. I couldn't hear you. 
you just have, so your eyes are open. You opened your eyes anyway, even though you couldn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> just to see, so I can be with you, right? Because uh, sometimes in the releasing of the energy, we can get a little caught up in the energy, uh, okay. and it can cycle itself around. And so what we're doing is just opening some more, it's sort of like going from the felt sense of the leg, whatever's happening, if there's emotions releasing, noticing that, and then coming back to the felt sense of the leg, and breathing. So can you describe what's happening in this area, this energy in your leg now? Um, it's... Um it feels very congested, mm -hmm. uh, as if um, stuck. Stuck energy is what it feels like. Um, okay. Well, that's kind of a judgment. Yeah, that's okay. We can say we, these are perfect because, however it is, we see that we can say, oh, "Okay, hello, stuckness. Hello, congestion. I welcome you. Just now. Seeing if you can relax the rest of your body open to give it more space." <sighs> Yeah. Okay. everything I can do to stay here right now. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> That's right. It's just opening. Bring in the felt sense of the weight of your body in the chair. You're here. It's okay. And we're just listening to this energy. We're finally letting it have some space. <laughs> it seems very connected to the heart. <laughs> So it's all right to rest awareness with your heart just now to see what's happening there in the heart area. I, I feel more sensation there than I have felt for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel an opening. Okay. All right. I'm just feeling that for a few moments and then resting with that. And then now check out the leg again. And see what's happening there. It it doesn't seem to have changed at all. Mm -hmm. Can you describe it now? Even though it seems like it hasn't changed, just describe it just from right now. Um, there's a lot of intense sensation, pain in. Um, the upper thigh and the knee feels uh, real agitated and kind of gritty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good. So grittiness, agitation, the energies that are happening, and as much as you can, relaxing the leg open to let it be there because it's already there. Right? Just relaxing the leg open. However you do that is the right way, your way is exactly right. <coughs> mm. Again, it seems to go to the heart.
So a few words about what's happening in the heart area. It, it feels muddy. Muddy. Okay. And that's all right, too. <laughs> Hello, muddiness. It's just what is, right? It's just what is. It's so simple. Just being with the muddiness. And what's happening now? What's the most present happening? My knee. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it hurts quite a bit. It hurts. Okay. And is it in a, in a good position as far as the best it can be in this moment? Um, no, I, I could. Uh, yeah, it's better now. Yeah. Um, but then. Uh, that's part of my problem is I don't know how much, you know, I have a memory of the pain when it's in the other position, but I, I'm not feeling the pain when it's in the best position and when I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. So then how am I dealing with it? If I don't feel it, I'm just feeling the memory, you know, remembering how mm -hmm. it felt. So I don't, I don't know how to deal with that. Well, both can be, you know, as, as you, maybe, I don't know if you saw the uh, videos of the other day, you know, both can work. You can purposely bring up the memory of something, uh, like in details, like in, in speaking with a son on the phone. You can bring them into now. It's just a knee is pretty handy because it's usually attached. <laughs> 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 One of those attachments that you don't really want to let go of attachment of. <laughs> That's right? true. So did you then, while we were speaking, did you put it into a, a position that was more painful or did, because initially you had said that uh, it wasn't uh, very loud, the feeling, the energy speaking there? Um, I, I, moved, I moved my leg into a position where I could feel pain at the beginning of our conversation and yeah. left it in that exact position until just now when you asked me to okay. find the knee's best position. Okay. And so what's happening right now? Well, with the knee in the best position, there's there's no pain. There's no pain. Hmm. But if I stood up or moved it, crossed my leg, for example. Okay, just... Uh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, because it's not to, um, it's when the pain is happening when it comes, um, if it if it does, because um, you don't really know, right? Because it, when it first started happening, it just came out of the blue, right? Yes, it, years ago when it first started, yes, I didn't have any yeah. idea yeah. how it's, why yeah. or how or anything. Right, and so that can be how it also might stop happening same exact way that you've already experienced out of nothing something happens something else doesn't happen we don't know it's all i'm pointing to is we don't really know what's going to happen next right right so um it's a bit tricky when there's been an ongoing felt sense of pain it seems like it's always been there and <laughs> it does at this point it yeah, does feel yeah <laughs> and yet in this moment it's not here Yes. So the truth is, it's not happening. Yeah, but all I have to do is move my leg a few inches. Okay, move, move your leg a few inches. And the pain is back. Okay, it's here now. Newly. It's here now. Yeah. Different or the same? Uh, the thigh is very much the same. The knee, uh, it doesn't feel gritty anymore, but it just, it, it just hurts. It, mm -hmm. I, I'm the outer part of the knee. Okay. So 
Is it all right to relax open with the, the thigh? What's happening there? Do you want me to ask my leg what's happening? Is that what you... Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't actually I... said that, but hey, it's naturally occurring. <laughs> Um, I've done, I, I never get an answer. Um, although, well, that's not true. I, I sometimes get anger. I, okay. I feel anger, but I, I've gotten so good at not feeling anger, not allowing myself to feel anger that it dissipates instantly and tears come instead. Okay. Is there any anger here right now? Can you find it? I know it looks like tears, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, okay. I, yes, I can find it. Okay, what, what, and what is it attached to? What's the anger attached to? I feel like my leg has betrayed me. Yeah, that means betrayal. I had more betrayal. than fifty years of this wonderful, long, confident stride. I could walk anywhere and do anything, and now Perfect. I feel like an old person. Okay. And I'm pissed off. I don't didn't do anything to deserve this. You feel betrayed. Yes. Okay, let's sit with betrayal. <laughs> really let yourself feel betrayed. One hundred percent betrayed. Let it just take you. Well, that sort of swept through. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Now I just feel tired. and mm -hmm. You've been holding the energy quite a while, right? Holding yourself away from betrayal because it shouldn't yeah. be here and things should be different than they are. And, right? It's a very human experience. It's, it's not wrong. It's really important to know that it came here naturally. Out of these details, it naturally occurred that betrayal would be felt. It's just that we're not used to actually sitting right in betrayal. We try to get away from it. Right? It's one of these parts of being human that the suffering is in holding ourselves away from it. But letting ourselves just dive in and let it be here 100%. And so just checking out, just to, to check now, see how, how is betrayal now? Can you find any in this moment? I guess I'd say there's some in the heart center. It, mm -hmm. It's, um, it, it kind of feels a little broken. Yeah, a broken heart, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's hard to look at too is it, is it just feeling the brokenness what a sweet heart right imagine this is a person that you love and you can see that their heart is broken right? how would you feel about that this is this is one such heart I'd want to give him a hug yeah give give yourself a hug however you can <laughs> and anybody who feels to should also give themselves a hug. <laughs> Just even experience what's that like to give yourself a hug.
it's been a long time since I've given myself a hug. <laughs> <laughs> we keep forgetting ourselves, right? So easy to be compassionate for others. And then here's the broken heart right here. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time with, you know, which I should I should be able to figure this out and not stop it from happening and beating myself up about it happening. Mm -hmm. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the part, you know, if we don't know how to be with stuff that's new, mm -hmm. all you can be with is your, you know, invite that in the universe. Wow, this is really bugging me. You know, anytime something that's repeats itself and say, universe, show me how with your sincerity. Show me how I'm available. And one way or another, you know, it can come like this, that you connect on the internet <laughs> webcast. I mean, Quite a miracle. Who would have figured? <laughs> right? <laughs> or it, sometimes it's a bird that comes by and tilts its head at you in a certain way and suddenly it's understood or felt and Right. So it's like, you know, when you find that should word, to just remember that you don't know what you don't know. So should can't even come into the question. Right? And just invite that which is wanting, you want to invite it, whatever it is that you want to occur. And the universe will respond. And just a quick question of how's your leg feeling now? It's really about the same, although the heart feels better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may, it may take some time to allow the energy to relax, open, as it, if it's been held for a while. And who knows? We don't know, but the heart, yeah. maybe it's about just becoming okay with how the leg is. Yeah, and I'd really be okay with that, too. I mean, I don't, sure, I'd like it to be totally healed and fixed mm -hmm. and all that, but yeah. um, the most important thing is to stop this resistance, this yeah. it should be different yes. at, mm -hmm. attitude yes. that I'm really tired of, honestly. Yeah. But which provoked something, though, right? So it's beautiful, too. <laughs> thank you. Right? Yes, thank you. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you for so being much. so vulnerable and yes, uh, we sharing. We were just it. talking about vulnerability and this wonderful sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm. I appreciate the miracle of technology <laughs> since I couldn't be there with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... It's amazing. That's what I was inviting to be able to support more people. It wasn't long until Richard arranged this. <laughs> and it's true, supporting more people. And now you're supporting more people because of what you just shared. Yes. Right? You actually did a step-by-step -step example of how to be with what is. That can now be a support to other people. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah. My pleasure. So amazing. Step by step with pain like this. Out there for people to see how many people are in pain and don't know what to do with it. And mm -hmm. you're able to take them through like that. And, and her sharing. And see, now this comes back to the how we can uh, support the whole world, right? Because all I'm sharing is what I gave myself. All I'm sharing is how I learned to be with these bits and pieces that have shown up. And so how you are with yourself becomes what it is that you share and support the world to be a more loving place. But how to be with, what are these 
difficult places that we've been pushing away. Yes. That, and which society supports us in not really looking at and denying. In its innocence. In its innocence. Yes. In its innocence. We've all been taught to be feel dependent and to get our what we're supposed to do from outside of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Which can look like it works to a certain degree, but it doesn't actually come home. So this inner way of working, which this is... Inner way of being. Inner way of being. Right. True to you. Mm-hmm. Trusting yourself. And then sharing that. The word cutting edge comes to me. This is, I don't know if this is being done very often. I, teachers are sharing in lots of different ways, but this is, there's a depth here that I certainly haven't seen out there, so I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Occupy a <salt> zone. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Good old what, Richard. <laughs> what's your name and where are you calling from? Do you hear us on Skype? Yes. yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm Stefan. I'm from Montreal. Okay. Okay. I have some uh, difficulty understanding this uh, energy thing. Mm -hmm. But a curiosity. Yeah. You know, I can see the space. I can see from where I'm looking at. But feeling the uh, the energy, you know, I can see that you're that you are there appearing in my awareness. I can hear the sound. Mm -hmm. I can. Really, see no separation. But mm -hmm. when I look inside, there are pain body, or a, there's something that is. I, I I'm mistaken this for who I really am. You know, like uh, mistaking this when I look in inside. I often see like. Uh, uh, Heavy. It's uh, like something. Something is uh, between. No, not between, but so it's all it's all energy, right? Like even the sound. You know, even the the body is made up of vibrating molecules that. Are made more of space, you know, as an energy in movement. Uh, the okay. felt sense of like when you just pressed your lips, you know, the felt sense that there are lips pressing against each other. So what's happening in in the body, as you say, right now? There, there's a knot. There's a knot? Yes, whereabouts? Well, I think to go through the the neck area, through the uh, stomach. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, like something very tight. Okay, so just relaxing and giving this space to feel the, the knot, wherever it is. Breathing. And sort of allowing the rest of the body to relax, open around this energy that you have identified as a knot. And what happens when you sit with it? It, it, look, it? 
it moved uh, it moved mm-hmm. it moved from from uh, the uh, public area to the uh, I don't know to say it in English but to the left the left side of the uh, Weight, kind of the weight in the back, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's one. It's I'm moving. I'm not sure. But it's moving. Yeah, but you see, there, there it's coming back. It's uh, back again. It's moving into the, the cyclist. Mm-hmm. Did anything else happen? prior to some sort of sense as if the energy could come back, because it can't actually come back. It can only be registered newly as it is. I, th- I think uh, trying to, uh, to uh, put a location on it, it uh, made, made it come back. Trying hmm. to put a, a word on it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think about it. Yeah. Well, I can live with the pain, you know. The pain is uh, sometimes it's, sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not there. Mm-hmm. Just. But you're feeling it when it comes. Yeah. Yeah. And then it changes and goes. I mean, that is all I'm inviting, is just to be with it directly, not to do something instead of feeling. Well, you know, you were talking about uh, uh, Oponopono earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, I clean clean with Oponopono, you know, like, uh, maybe that's my question. I was, uh, I was, Wondering, you know, like Oponopono is a cleaning method that you say I love you, thank you, and uh, you know, and, uh, please forgive me, and uh, I love you. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. And so that's love. That's that's the love, you know. But for me, love is just a word. I, I don't really understand what love is, you know. I don't feel what love is. I, I can feel love for my dog, love for the kid, kitty, uh, the okay. cat. That so, so bring bring your the dog in, and <laughs> allow yourself to feel the love that you feel in connection with the dog. You know love. That's it. <laughs> right, and so it it just shows up in connection with whatever the dog provokes love alive in you. Really, it's not about you loving the dog. It's the dog actually provoked love alive in you. Can you can you repeat that? The dog provoked love alive in you, right? As soon as the image of the dog is there, instantly love comes and right. So it's provoked alive. Love is provoked provoked alive. It's not so much that I love my sons. It's that they provoke love alive in me, and I get to feel it. So, you do feel love, apparently. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, but, yeah, I still love. It's using the word, I love you, so, you know? Oh, when you don't actually, when it's not actually present, you mean? Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's about the cleaning method, it's about, uh, it's about uh, uh, welcoming every welcoming uh, the pain, you know, sometimes it's, it's easier for me to include the pain. Yes. To include, you know, sometimes it's, uh, everything is clear, everything is simple. And then I guess it's normal that it goes back to, it comes and it goes, you know, openness, tightness, openness, tightness. But I was wondering, is it, is it trying to work on, on, on the, uh, Trying to work on the pain—is it something that must be done, or is it 
Well, trying, I don't recommend. Inviting or allowing, I do. So inviting, what were you saying? Inviting, feeling the pain? If it's here and if it's if it's most present, right? Sometimes there can be pain that's just sort of background, but if it keeps showing up, then certainly, uh, to me, pain is just a way we get a hold of ourselves uh, to that our system tells us something is happening. And that's how it gets our attention. And so in opening to uh, this pain, then we get to explore what it is that's actually occurring uh, with whatever that pain is connected to. And sometimes it just dissipates into nothing. You don't even know why it was there, but uh, it could be that your that part of your body really just wanted awareness to rest with that part of your body, because awareness resting with anything is very healing. So in other words, it may not mean something. It may not show, uh, like the last lady, that you know betrayal was there. Um, it, it may just dissipate with the attention, with the awareness resting with that energy. It's all awareness, and awareness just likes to meet itself. And so when something like this is, like pain, is very present or consistent, the way to invite movement is by being with it. And, you know, you can also have support in that if that feels appropriate, as in, you know, an uh, energy worker or, uh, you know, or the support might be going to a beach, you know, a sunny place and being in the sun and the water and, you know, whatever occurs to the person that might be a support in that healing. So, 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 how does it come that it always come back? Is it, is it because I, I'm not allowing, allowing it to be fully? Because, you know, it's not only pain, you know, uh, I'm talking about lack, lack of health, lack of uh, wealth, or lack of love, maybe also, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. so that, that, that's very, that, that's uh, something that I find uh, very strange for me because You know, I. So we're each given. I care. Yeah, we're each given this life, whatever it is, whatever you're experiencing, and all the details connected to it. This mother, this father, brother, sister, this dog, um, to tend to and be with and find our way the best we can with the whole shebang. Um, so there isn't sort of a one answer for all of that. It's more like in this moment, what's present here? And if this uh, pain does show up, what can you do? All you can do is be with it when it shows up, and it will move perhaps for a while, and then the pain isn't occurring for a while. And then if it shows up, it wants that attention. We don't really know from a bigger perspective when it's happening, we don't know what it's about. It might be that this area of your body is a place that... Uh, perhaps even in your family, that energy's been held for, for generations and generations. And it might be that it requires attention, awareness, to rest with it more than once, however many times. It's just, is it true? Is it really truly here? If it's truly here, then that's all you have. There's no way around it. And it might repeat again and again and again. And there's no way. It's just to be with it when it is here. We don't have a, uh, you know, it might change, it might let go, um, but you can only be with what is and act accordingly, right? If if you are, uh, like you mentioned, uh, it sounded like you were inviting more prosperity in the financial uh, form of energy. Is that true? Yep. Yes. So then how I would be with that is say, okay, 
um, you know, this is a, perhaps in my own details, this is a little bit close to survival issue. You know, I, I'd love to have the energy of money uh, in some sort of balance where it, it feeds itself so I can just live my life. So there's more than enough of that. And then, you know, at first the, the invitations that you say this to the universe, so you're inviting that. And you feel inside your body, okay, you've given it over to the universe. And to the best of your ability to trust that. And then as invitations come your way, it may not look like a very tempting thing. Maybe washing dishes somewhere. You know, but it, you can feel in the moment the, the flavor of the invitation. And it's to follow that. To follow what is inviting you and see where it leads without... Uh, judging it to be not good enough or not enough money or anything like that. And then with the trust, as that grows, and as you move with the details, then that, and keep also, if it's true, to inviting. Because it shows up. How does it show up? It's just like the pain. It shows up by there's not enough money. Right? So there's the nudge. Okay, not enough money. Great. That directs me to invite more of this. It's just energy. What you can also do is, is uh, empower yourself to look at money and how do you empower it as something more than the floor or the sound, right? Because energy is equal. There's nothing that's more than anything else. And so there's a collective way that we empower money as if it's more important than other aspects of life. And that's just a belief, because it's not true. But we can look at our own personal way that we're, we are with money and heal that in whatever way it shows up. So and, and sometimes, you know, people don't really like this uh, flavor of satsang with canela because it's always pointing back to your own self as being the one that can move this. And, it, you know, it has to be because that way, that's how you end up being more empowered and more ready to settle and trust into who you are because you've been tending to this lifetime. You've gotten yourself through whatever hurdles you've made it, to, it through. And it's to remember that and go, okay, I've done tons of stuff. I've made it through all sorts of things. So this is not a problem. This is an invitation. And see what happens. So how, how, how is that? <laughs> is that okay to be able to respond to your life, to your details? This is what responsible is, being able to respond to however life shows up. I guess I got, I got uh, one, uh, one more question about, about that. Okay. Would you say, would you, would you, uh, what would you say about looking into, uh, looking at, at what I am, you know, as, as uh, the perceiver or as a uh, awareness, would you say that looking at, looking at oneself, is enough to, or will help to guide you in any situation. Is that looking at the at the face? Is that and being conscious about and, and, and noticing what happened and allowing there to be, but coming back to that face. Is it something that you 
that you can uh, talk about it? Well, I, as, as much as I can hear, there's a little bit of um, clicking and stuff going on the the sound as you were speaking. But what I'm I feel you, you were saying, and correct me if I'm not accurate, uh, that is being conscious or being aware of what is as it's happening is that enough? Is that true? Yes, it, it, it's true. At the same time, uh, looking at where it happens also in this, uh, that it's happening in the space or uh, from, from the space the space where I look from. The, yeah. is, is, that, is, that, is that enough? Because, you know, if I, I, I know myself and I, I know that if I go trying to fix things, it's, it's never going to be an ending to that. Right. Yeah. No. It's not. It's not. See, trying again. I totally uh, invite a letting go of the. You know. You can find the energy. Oh, there I am trying again, and just go. Okay. Feel the trying until it dissipates, or just relax and and shift that word to allowing. What am I allowing? What am I inviting now? See, there's no push on that. So attempting to fix something, you know, instead of of uh, looking at it. That's an old way of what how we're taught to be, and it's catching that you know you, it's it's a habit, and it's collective, so it's a fairly big habit. It, it's it's not just you. In other words, it's something that's pretty easy to fall in into because so much of the world is is happening that way. So it's finding that oh, attempting to fix something happening. Well, I know that as you said, it doesn't work, does it? So. It's like, okay, how can I invite this? And your way of inviting whatever it is that's going on, whatever details you want to show up, will be unique and from that moment. So it's not like you can have a plan for the whole shebang of your life about how to live it. You can only be you. And whatever it shows up, and however you see it, of what you might be able to do to lean this way, that way, step in this direction or not, uh, make your mistakes, find out your humanness, <laughs> and carry on. And that's what life is. And it promotes also living like that, promotes awareness to be aware of itself. If you're listening to you, listening to what is, in the wholeness, not just what the mind has to say, but looking at it newly, okay, if the mind repeats something, to look at it newly, okay, what's really going on, see where it connects with the body, and carry on from there, feeling it. It's just a bit different way of being with the details. It doesn't change the details. And yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Loving these, uh, what's coming up today. <laughs> Pretty straight ahead stuff, eh? It's beautiful. Hi. Hi. <laughs> wasn't planning to talk. <laughs> That's right. No plans. No plans. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I guess what I notice sometimes is there's this sense of something very fragile. And I'm always protecting it. Mm. It's like there's an image of bones shattering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it here right now? Yeah. Are you protecting it? 
feel as though I'm somehow being very careful with it. Okay. So protecting anything costs some energy. And it's here. And whatever it is that's happening, this fragility, this area, everything's going through it anyway. Even that there's a sense to protect it, right? Is it's already feeling vulnerable if there's an attempt, you know, that protection even shows up. So, I invite to see what it's like to let go of the energy that you're spending on protection, and seeing what happens, so you can feel it from your own direct experience that this area, this part of yourself, can in fact be here of its own existence, however that is. Trusting it, in other words. Hmm. There's a sense of something somehow very intense and very subtle all at once. Is that like you? Yes. protection is gone or here yeah, there's still some traces of it yeah whereabouts still in front so sort of. it's still right along the collarbones or the primary place okay they're right to just feel the protection for a while just feel that energy Has it been broken before? No. No. But I remember even as a child, it was sort of, there was a sense of, you know, I didn't even like to sleep on my back because it felt very exposed. Mm -hmm. And I know Richard's not going to like this at all, but, oh well, Richard. <laughs> but it may have been something that happened in a past life, that there was a brokenness. What registered here is like, oh, it does, it feels like it's been broken. So I suggest, right? But it doesn't matter so much what I feel as much as what's happening there. Is the protection still there? Yeah, Here? it's still there. Yeah. Same. It's softened it somewhat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you bring your attention to the bone itself. There's kind of a vibration. Mm -hmm. I'm just relaxing with that. Something more of the flavor of the intensity rather than the subtlety. Mm -hmm. And as you rest with that, is the protection still there? It softens. It softens some more, yeah. Is there something intense that you'd like to say? Anything? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> is there anything intense that the bone would like to say? <laughs> Showed up some red there. From here, it looked red. Mm. No, nothing that puts, wants to put itself in words. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, 
from here it's also a little more on the left hand side it's a side that's closer to you yeah except for mine isn't though oh, okay. <laughs> so i would have said here first so maybe yeah. it's a mirror image maybe yeah yeah and it's not you know energy shows up differently So what's happening now? Um, there's some thought about what it has to do with letting everything in. And simultaneously letting everything in? Mm -hmm. Yes. Letting it all be here. Yes, yes. Yeah. From here it looked like all of a sudden a crispy clarity somehow see the shift but not I didn't know what it was yeah Time for a break. <laughs> Not bones. <laughs> no bones breaking, right? No bones, no. Okay. Protection? Yeah, there comes a point where it feels like enough. <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah? Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, enough of... Mm, attention. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> attention. Okay. Oh. Well, your attention? Uh, being the object of attention. Oh, oh, what it appears to be, yeah. Because awareness is here when there's nobody here, right? The appearance of cameras or not. And there is, you know, a fabric of the awareness being magnified. can be very healing. Uh, is there an object? I guess I don't know. You don't know, right. Seems to grab onto a wisp of something every now and then. Right, yeah. So without an object, is it comfortable to be with the attention. There is no attention without an object. Mm -hmm. And yet circumstances are the same. Yeah, as soon as there's any belief in the form brings form here. You're remembering, all oh, right, it's this openness and molecules dancing like this in their openness. you see there? It was like the protection was about protecting some sense of knowing what's going on, being the knower. Ah, lovely. Lovely finding. And of course, right? Do you understand the of course part? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Oh, 
Okay, now I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that out of all the moments that have happened, that it would show up like this would be natural for you. That's the of course. <laughs> <laughs> so handy there's someone to ask things right <laughs> and you yourself you can ask yourself often A few words from here. Anything? Here there's nothing that wants to speak. Mm -hmm. Yet speaking carries the here-ness. It's so fun. just like to point to in these moments sitting like this in no separation see this is a support to the whole universe by what we're allowing right here right now let's see if Richard buys that well it depends how much I guess he's buying it for <laughs> <laughs> What's the number? <laughs> but wouldn't you say that it would be pretty difficult to do anything that wasn't in accordance with self from the perspective of self? Absolutely. Right. And energetically, because we're a representation of all of the what life is, allowing this uh, that's the support because it, it, everything is touched. We are one. Yeah, life is all happening right here. Yeah, yeah, and it's all connected. So of course it changes everything. Occupy, occupying yourself. Yes, it's lovely how that the words came up. All this speaking about the truth, and the truth is right now. Um, I'm wondering whether it would fit for everybody if we had an early break, because my bladder's saying <laughs> I need to go to the washroom. It's becoming louder, <laughs> most present. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but even that, right? It's just a regular old detail, and even that that gives us direction. And then there's the okay. Well, which way to the washroom? You know, <laughs> all of it, and it runs. And all we need to do is follow it. Go quarter to three. Come back. 
Sure. Quarter to three.